National Weather Service in Miami has issued a tornado warning for southeastern Henry County in southern Florida, northern Broward County in southeastern Florida, southwestern Palm Beach County in southeastern Florida, until 1.15 a.m. At 1 a.m., a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located 8 miles north of intersection Alligator Alley and Miami Canal, or 23 miles west of Sunrise, moving north at 50 miles an hour. Hazard, Tornado Source, Radar Indicated Rotation Impact, Flying Debris will be dangerous to those caught without shelter. Mobile homes will be damaged or destroyed. Damage to roofs, windows, and vehicles will occur. Tree damage is likely. Locations impacted include Holy Land Wildlife Refuge and Rotenberger Wildlife Refuge. Take cover now. Move to an interior room on the lowest floor of a sturdy building. Avoid windows. If you are outdoors, in a mobile home, or in a vehicle, move to the closest substantial shelter and protect yourself from flying debris. Heavy rainfall may hide this tornado. Do not wait to see or hear the tornado. Take cover now. Tornadoes are extremely difficult to see and confirm at night. Do not wait to see or hear the tornado. Take cover now. All stations stand by tornado warning. At 12.39 a.m., National Weather Service Miami issued a tornado warning for Broward County until 1 a.m. At 12.30 a.m., 12.38 a.m., a severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located near the intersection of Alligator Alley and Miami Canal, 16 miles west of Pembroke Pines, moving northwest at 40, it's 40 miles per hour. Source is radar indicated rotation and locations affected include the intersection of Alligator Alley and Miami Canal, mile marker 30 on Alligator Alley and West Broward Recreation Area on Alligator Alley. That concludes this uh, Warning, AI4GK in Palm Bay on Sebastian. Hands of impact. Uh, as you may have mentioned on the top there, the hurricane has now been upgraded to a Category 4, 140 mile an hour winds. All of this happened between 2 and 5 a.m. Eastern Time this morning. This is catastrophic in potential, without a doubt. Uh, there are only five categories on the hurricane scale, and four is just about uh, as bad as it gets. Uh, everybody really advised across the state today not even to go outside and drive. Just stay home. Hopefully you've planned, you've stocked up on your groceries and your water 
and you can just ride it out for as long as you have power because everybody do, does believe at some point, somewhere, somebody is going to lose power. It could be days, could be elect, uh, a week or more. This happens pretty much every single hurricane that slams into the Sunshine State. The rain here right now in downtown Tampa is steady, but there's really not much wind yet. So the really strong outer bands have really yet to come rake central west florida just yet but everybody knows they are coming this is going to be a day-long event it's going to be a deluge of heavy rains anywhere from 10 to 15 inches of rain and that storm surge everybody was warning about uh, predicted yesterday anywhere between 5 and 15 feet it really now depends where the eye makes landfall if it makes landfall a little south of tampa bay and say sarasota county the surge impacts on the Tampa Bay area, which has a whole lot of water around it, uh, could certainly be a little bit less, but still not something to dismiss by any stretch. So it could be a very long day. Landfall expected later uh, this afternoon. It is now a Cat 4, 140 mile an hour winds. Uh, it's expected that it could be a Cat 3 when it actually makes landfall, but it it really appears it's going to be close, right on the line between three and four. So this is going to be a historic hurricane.
There you see the radar, and the main point of this is that the super heavy rain is to the north, and it's a kind of expanding to the north as the system is going this way. This is expanding to the north. So throughout this system's life, I think, this is where the rain is going to be, north and east of the center, and this is going to be important for central Florida as we look ahead, because if you think of this as the track of the system, like this, let's say, it could be a little farther south, whatever, but, but if the worst of the rain is in here, like this, look, that encompasses our major cities, Tampa, Orlando, and Jacksonville, and that is the expectation of what's going to happen. And here on the rain, this is a new uh, rain forecast from the Weather Prediction Center. I want you to look at that area there from Orlando toward Daytona Beach, and that's 18 to 24 inches in widespread areas, which we would expect uh, some isolated uh, spots, maybe 30 inches uh, in this area. So this is a, a an extreme, and they're calling it extreme as well, a flash flooding threat uh, all over central and north Florida. In terms of the models, I just showed you that, say that the it's right down the middle of the cone of the models. We don't expect anything uh, else from that. So inland goes the storm, and the, what we have here are the hurricane force gusts in the orange here, and that's hurricane force gusts, and you notice they extend almost all the way across the street. The storm has grown so large, and we're talking about midnight tonight now, and just coming to Orlando, those are the hurricane force sustained. Notice they're shrinking because the overall storm will be weakening, but expanding. And the yellow, that's tropical storm force winds. Look at that. This is, this is the entire peninsula except for Miami-Dade and Broward County. Now, let's move forward in time for six hours. Now it's 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. Now the hurricane force gusts are all of, of uh, metropolitan Orlando down to Melbourne, the Space Coast, and, and uh, the, essentially we don't have hurricane force winds. Let's just ignore that. But we're talking about sustained winds of 60 70 miles per hour, gusts up to 80, 90 miles per hour, something like that. So damaging winds on top of that incredible rain that we just talked about in the two-foot uh, range in that same area. So we expect incredibly difficult conditions here in Central Florida tomorrow. And by the way, some counties are already taking, are already doing this, and maybe more than I haven't heard of is they're, they're opening shutter, shelters and all that kind of thing. Normally you don't do that for a windstorm, but they're so worried about the flooding that they want people to have safe places to go, and also they want electricity dependent people and people that, you know, if the power goes out for an extended period of time are going to have a problem. So we all expect all of that in the whole Central Florida area, millions and millions of people, and then it moves north, and now we have the storm driving the water into to Jacksonville, into Charleston, and this is going to start on Thursday. So long, long way to go here. Guys, back to you. Is power lines that are on fire, the phone number is 941-301-1585. Building collapse is a tree down on a house. There are there is no one trapped. It is on the roof. The phone number is eight one three five five seven five nine six. Vehicle has five three one eight thirty fourth Street East, Rock nineteen seventeen. Contact to repeat that, please. Electrical hazard five three one eight thirty fourth Street East, Box nineteen seventeen. Thank you, Thank you for five and five. I'm ten eighty six. Watch matter. 1914. Additional uh, Sam's Club fire alarm. Hi. 
Cedar Hammock, Electrical Hazard, Heather Hills Estates, 208 48th Avenue, Terrace West, Box 2011, switch to tax 6 for additional. Amy, Cody, or Nate, Kenny, can any of y'all hear me? And four. Randy, do you have cell service? No, sir, I do not. Each box 2104 on TAC 4. Copy, thank you. Uh, you don't know where the storm's at, and don't know anything really. Yeah, same here. Alright, I did get an uh, email from Myra before I lost cell service, just basically um, asking uh, She's just basically asking um, how many people we can easily re reach. Uh, is there anything that would prevent you from coming in when the weather pre uh, when the weather breaks? Not unless this power pole goes goes down right in my driveway. Ten four. Um, I'm going to check in with everybody again at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, I was trying to get a text out to everybody, but everybody thought I'd better check in with everybody at 8 o'clock tonight. 10 4, yeah, I'm going to keep the radio on. I got it, uh, I'm in the car right now charging it, so I'm trying to keep it charged up, but I'm going to keep it on me and keep it on. Alrighty, man. Well, take care. Um, I will check back with you probably in the morning. Alright, man. You too. Thank you too much. I ain't got cell service either, but all I got is a radio for right now. Alright. Um... Yeah, is uh are you you doing good? I ain't got no power but we're all right, but you know, no more anything else changing um get it's daylight I'll probably be headed towards the house. Alrighty, sounds good. Um if you do happen to get cell service if you could Text uh, or call Nate, Danny, and Kenny, and uh, just let them know that you know, we got radios on if they want to check in, and then we'll try and check in again tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. Sam, I hear you guys. Um, I talked to everybody earlier, but but Jamie, I haven't been able to reach him, but. Kenny, was that you that popped up? Yeah. A trouble. Uh, uh, wait, 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 if anybody's got anything that will hold them back from being able to come in, just let me know. Um, I know Mike, you said we're going to head to the house and check your place out. Yeah, 10-4. I mean, as soon as I can, then I'll get straight back to the yard. Roll call, please. Okay, it's eight one three four five five seven five nine six. Sounds good. Y'all be safe. 
Uh, I guess we'll talk again in the morning. Hey, boys, y'all be safe yourselves. Everybody try to stay safe through the night, man. We'll see y'all on the other side. Division one's good. Cedar Hammock, stand by for a call. Knowledge Division one, Division four, and Division five. Did anybody else come up? Division two is good. Can we lift to six six zero two five Lily Way? Do you have a phone number, please? Nine four one two three four eight four six eight six uh mini briefing on event six event six at twenty uh hundred hours uh eight PM tonight we're gonna do uh, uh what we know at this point in time on event six um at eight PM tonight. I'll try to get a hold of division eight and division eleven. Division 8 copies. <laughs> Copy Division 8. As soon as there's contact 4. This is not this best, right? Yes, the watercraft in distress is going to be a, a yacht that's taking on water. Uh, there's one man on it. It's going to be east of Smeet Island and west of the Green Bridge. It's going to be a 50-foot yacht, unknown if lights on anymore. The child's uh, mother called us in. There's no children on there. It's just one adult male. He called her and stated his phone is on 1% and his boat capsized and sinking. ECC from Cedar Hammond Dispatch. Go ahead, Cedar Hammond. The last address for electrical hazard 560 Street West. We have already already have a call for that. I tried calling the call figure, the caller back, and got straight to voicemail. Copy, I'll drop that. No, there is any call. Calling in a small brush fire, power lines causing a small fire, 9015 Vista Verde Drive, Box 521, switch attack 5 for any additional. Another oh, guy. See, I have a crazy coffee call. Fire alarm, general signal for Presbyterian Villas, 6125 14th Street West, Box 2023, switch to tax 6 for additional. East Manatee, we got a outside fire, unknown fire, 61st of East County Road 675, Box 1721, switch to tax 3 for any additional. 
GCC from Cedar Ham Dispatch. Fire alarm panel going off. Something wrong with generator. It's going to be a three-story apartment complex. No flames or smoke visible. Possibly generator function. See you having a special coffee. Thank you. 1930. We have a structure fire called in from somebody in a different location. It's going to be a house behind 1711 17th Street West, Box 915. Go to Attack 5 for any additional. Easy. No dispatch. Mills the EOC, please. Hazards, at small at this time. 941-812-4434. 21st, Terrace East, Box 1929, go to TAC 2 for additional. Three six two nine seventy first Terrace East. Do you have a call back and any additional information for the structure fire that's called in for seventeen eleven Seventeenth Street West? Call back number is a disconnected cell. There is the caller was not inside the building. Unknown if anyone was injured. Uh, single level house, unknown if anyone was trapped and unknown where the fire. Everything's unknown. Uh, we know there was a leak, so just wanted to make sure she was okay and that she was going to be able to figure something out for food. Yeah, I'll walk down there. Um, it's just leaking down onto the thermostats so that they both went off even before the power went off, but I'll walk down there and you can touch base with her. I'm oh, sorry, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, if she could get a hold of um, Regina or her supervisor when she has a chance, that would help. Okay, we're going to have to use this locker to do it because nobody's got cell phone service here. Um, This was called in by first party, wires down, no flames, there was arcing, no water, near the hazard, phone number is 405-590-3366, no injuries. Southern Manatee, ready for a call. See, they have a copy of fire alarm earlier than this. Thank you.
went through that eye wall replacement cycle. The wind field expanded some where those hurricane force wind gusts extended farther from the center. But with the rain moving through, we've got a boundary farther to the north, and that's going to enhance some of these rain totals right through central Florida all the way up to the Atlantic coastline. So a lot of rain still to come, and this evening we're seeing all of it fall right now. You're exactly right, Stephen. That interaction with that boundary really going to prolong that heavy rain that Floridians are going to be experiencing. Well, our very own Robert Ray has been in Fort Myers since before dawn and experienced some of the worst of Hurricane Ian. And we want to show you what he saw. Well, what we are seeing is massive storm surge coming into the downtown area, flooding all of these so you can see exactly uh, what is happening. It's block after block of the water that has come in uh, from the river over there. There is debris floating and flying. Uh, boats are untangled. Vehicles are submerged at this point. And you see the wind just pushing, pushing the water all around the surge in. It is phenomenal. The power of Hurricane Ian, even at this point uh, right now, Water, parts of palm trees and other things are flying around right now. As we go into the night, we are losing light here in Fort Myer. Yet this storm just continues to wreak havoc here with these gusts. Look at this. Ah. Hard to even walk. All these storefronts are taking it. And this town of Fort Myers. The wind just pushing. It looks like white caps out here. It is not safe by any means. The power of the storm just being unleashed. The energy, and it's nowhere near over as it would continue up the peninsula. There are over a million power outages here uh, this evening. And it's not even dark yet. We're going to hunker down here somewhere. Robert Ray, Fox Weather.